Eternal Father, once again we bow before you with thanksgiving and gratitude in our hearts that you deem it important to call us into salvation to the family of God and grant us a space around the table of the servants to join with you in expanding your work, your kingdom, and to build your church in making disciples. What a task as you are building it. You are enlisting us to be the mouthpiece as witnesses throughout the earth, throughout the world, and in our everyday interaction and sphere of influence, not to forget who we are, whose we are, and whose kingdom is at hand. We welcome your very spirit at this time of teaching and preaching your word. Uh, nothing in our hands we bring, but we are totally depending upon you through the power of your word to change our lives and to make an impact in the life of your people and to motivate us, encourage us to move forward with gratitude and vitality, with much love and grace to share the good news of Christ with others. We love and bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. In continuing with this mini-series entitled The Christian Identity The Christian Identity from the time we celebrated the uh, day of Pentecost on the first Sunday of June. Last Sunday we visited together the Christian identity and the expansion of the early church. We reached and visited the book of Acts, chapter 12, where we saw the concluding and the climactic aspect of the Apostle Peter vis-à-vis -vis his earthly ministry located in, the, in Palestine, in the land where God has not only called him, baptized him with the Holy Spirit, and used him as the Apostle to the Jewish people. And as the physician disciple, Dr. Luke, have recorded for us in the book of Acts, we saw the first early 12 chapters of Acts, uh, the main figures of the historical unfolding was around the Apostle Peter. As I call your attention on last week, with the expansion of the work and of the church, when we come to chapter 12, we saw Peter left the prison on his miraculous escape from Herod's clutches. He went on to the place where the saints were gathering at John Mark's mother's house, praying together for him, and the Lord sent his angels to get him out of the jail cells, out of uh, Herod's clutches, and he went straight to the place where the saints were praying for him, But this prayer also was a climactic aspect when Peter reached there and they could not believe that was Peter and the commotion was going on. He lifted up his hand. Peter lifted up his hand as to calm the crowd and to remove their doubts, uh, to let them know the exhibit A of their prayer request to the Lord is here. It is I, Peter would have said. But we also saw at the end of chapter 12 when Peter departed from them, that little word we saw in verse 17 of chapter 12 that Peter left for another place. It was not just geographically Peter left the place where they were praying with the words, make sure that you tell James, the senior pastor of the church of Jerusalem, a colleague in the faith, half-brother of the Lord who will write the book of James later on and who himself later on will be killed at the pinnacle of the same temple in Jerusalem. Peter said, tell James for me that the Lord got me out. But also tell the other brothers that I'm being set free from Herod's clutches. And we saw, Luke says he left for another place. Literally, you've never seen Peter any longer in the records of the book of Acts, except when his name was briefly 
mentioned as part of the crowd of the Jerusalem Council in chapter 15 to give what I call the first mini, but the first epistles of the New Testament leadership team to go and spread as postcards, if you will, as a gospel track, if you will, as a doctrinal creed, if you will, of what believers ought to now transition from Judaism into the Christian church. The word is expanding and the church is spreading. We saw that on last week. But today I want to call your attention to uh, the Christian identity in the missionary movement, if you will, the birth of the missionary movement of the church. Turn with me uh, where our dear sister read in the book of Acts chapter 13 and look at the text with me. In Acts chapter 13, we find the first two verses there. And there were a context of a multi-ethnic, multi-racial gathering in the church of Antioch. And it was there intentionally, just like on the day of Pentecost, you had worshippers, God-fearing Jews from almost every sector of the known world. They came to the holy city. So it was at Antioch. That is now about to become one of the superpower of a major center, if not the second next to the mother church of Jerusalem, where the missionary movement will be birthed. But the church was not sitting in meeting committee meetings and details of notes and, and uh, Robert rules of order and uh, uh, policies and, and uh, uh, what do we say about this and that. No, they were there just in prayer and in fasting. This is important. When you trace the New Testament church, it was birthed not on a seminary campus, not a college campus, not on a university, Christian university campus, but the church was birthed in the middle of a prayer meeting. Because as Jesus was blessing the disciples outside of the holy city, he pulled them outside of the holy city, Luke said in his first version at the end of his gospel, chapter 24, uh, he pulled them outside of the holy city to the region of Bethany. As he was being ascended to the heaven, he lifted up his hand and he blessed the disciples. And Luke said something that is critical in that text. The last glimpse, if you will, of the disciples of the Lord is that he's blessing them as he's going, passing midair, leaving his church behind. And the church was not even inaugurated or birthed, if you will, because he was still speaking with the disciples as he's sending them back to wait in prayer in the holy city, which they were not even in the holy city. They were outside in the vicinity of Bethany. Do not miss this. Jesus did not leave earth to heaven from the holy city. He left from the region of Bethany. There's an important theological, even ecclesiastical, or shift of system in that moment. A shifting from the Judaism practice, a shifting for a brief moment from the sight of just the Jewish eyes on the holy city, an aspect of inclusion for all the Gentiles to come even outside from the holy city for they themselves had no hope of a temple, no hope of a Messiah, no hope of a salvation, no hope of a heaven. But God in his sovereignty had a plan to reach out to every nation, every tribe, every tongue with the same gospel based from the salvific work of that one and only Savior of the world, the Lord Jesus Christ. And thus, as they have the last glimpse of him blessing them, Luke says they went back worshiping the Lord. But they were worshiping, but also fulfilling what he told them to go and do. Wait. And they were waiting now in the holy city in prayer. It was in that prayer meeting, as they were faithfully gathering in prayer, the Holy Spirit of God came down and birthed the church and gave them a new identity. They no longer connect themselves to the Jewish or the uh, uh, religious system of the law. Now they have a spirit of the living God who comes down as the CEO of the church to birth the church, watch me, and connect 
every believers with that same Holy Spirit and make them one body, the body of Christ. One family, the family of God. One church, one Lord, one Savior. Here is the word. One baptism, Paul says in the book of Ephesians. Oneness. Because they were together in one place. Praying to the one God who promised them the coming of the Holy Spirit of God and the church was birthed there. Notice that pattern. In Antioch, the same pattern is being repeated. Look at verse 1 with me. A multi-ethnic, multi-racial, multi-regional gathering in Antioch. That was a major center, Antioch was. And thus the church, hear me well, reflects that metropolitan multi-ethnic, multi-racial uh, uh, context where it was located. Listen, if you want to build a church with a multi-ethnic people, multi-ethnic congregation, a multi-racial, multi-even linguistic, you cannot go up in Montana in the United States <laughs> and hoping to find African up there and a large number of Syrian up there, and large number of Caribbean islanders up there. No, listen, you're just fooling yourself because you're on a geographical location where you hardly see the context, these people within that context. I'll never forget trafficking the streets of Timisoara, uh, Romania, and later on sitting by the uh, Black Sea in Bucharest. And as we were ministering and doing some work there, uh, some of the little kids wanted to quickly touch my hair and my hands to see because some of them have never seen in person a black person in their own Romanian language, which I was attempting to learn for almost one month. They were calling Negro, 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 Negro. And they were saying Negro with a joy because with their naked eyes, they are able to see a, a black person and able to teach, touch your hair. Uh, if they ever seen one before uh, at the time, it was on TV. Charles Sisko, uh, the dictator of Romania, was just gone less than a year out of the country. And here we were in to share the good news of Christ. My point is simply this. If it had to be a multi-ethnic, multi-regional, multi-racial, multi-movement of this missionary movement that has not stopped since. You need to hear this. It has not stopped since. There has not been a different waves of missionary movement in the church of Jesus Christ. All of them are connected to this first one. So to say, just like we did not have two, three, four, five coming of the Holy Spirit of the day of Pentecost. There was not a coming for the Americans a coming of the Holy Spirit of God for the Russians, a coming of the Holy Spirit of God for the Chinese, a coming of the Holy Spirit of God for the Africans, a coming of the Holy Spirit of God for the Yours. No, we were not having waves of coming of the Spirit. It's that same Holy Spirit who came to birth, that one church under one Lord established one baptism, which means the identity in the word baptismo, baptism is given with that one spirit so the church can go out now to do the work that Christ began to do and to teach. Are you there with me? We're not out there to impress people with our theological training, with our degrees and our schooling that we have attempted to. No, this movement has people who have never been uh, formally theologically trained, but as faithful in prayer, faithful in Bible reading, faithful in mission, faithful in giving throughout the whole earth. The mistake we can make is to think that we are the only one in the superpower first world who has money to give, clothes to send, food to give, to cause people in the second, third, fourth world to be depending upon us because we become the gods now. As if we are the God who have the salvation. We are the one who got it, not knowing that this thing began long time ago in Antioch when the believers were praying to go and do, do what? Carry out obediently the work, the mandate of the church. It did not start with strategic planning. Listen, marketing, it becomes in the context of prayer. When prayer and fasting begin to, listen to me, mold and shape 
newly believers, their cultural background decreases. Their linguistic accent fades away. Their love under the ostracism of the Holy Spirit of God takes over and increases. They don't become in there, man, I'm Christian. Uh, oh, I'm Ethiopian. Hey, I'm from Syria. I'm from... The, and I, no, no, no. They were praying and fasting, not as if to impress them with their eloquence in prayer. No, even the leaders there were trying to see if they can help the new believers to know where to turn in the Torah to find a promise of God, to know what's going on here is a promise that Jesus has made that we will receive the Holy Spirit, but we're not going to sit there and then just soak and be sour and collect money and build our own empire. No, we are here to build and expand the kingdom of God. They were helping them to grow with the knowledge and the truth depending on that one Holy Spirit. In fact, the pattern of praying and fasting was there as if we cannot do this thing on our own. They will cut our heads off before we leave town if we attempt to advance this gospel, this Christianity on our own. And the Holy Spirit of God will come upon them. The same Peter that I mentioned who was the apostle designated to the Jew. You heard what Peter said in Acts chapter 4 verse 20. Listen, we have, we have been witnesses of these things. We have a message to proclaim. Who do you want us to feel? Man or God who call us? And Peter who was running for his neck a few days, a few weeks ago. Now he's standing before those governors and officials to tell them, with that confidence and this mandate, I cannot obey you, but I must obey the God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I must obey the head who died and resurrected with all power so that his church can move forward. There at Antioch, look at verse 30, chapter 13, verse 1. In the church of, at Antioch, there were prophets. Please circle the word prophets. Because you begin to see different offices, what we call ecclesiastically offices within the church. I need to pause here to tell you, in 2022, there are a lot of illegitimate, illegal, I can even say diabolos type of prophets running around in the name of Jesus. The Lord said, the Lord said, and the Lord never said to them, some of them are becoming serious manipulators, They're even including mind games under the disguise that they are being sent by the Lord as prophets or prophetess. This is not blowing hot air. This is, assu this is not assumption or, or I'm just coming up with my own thinking. Listen, you yourself have experienced people who, I got a word. They always have a word for you, but they don't, they're not even in the word. Not, their face is not even in the book. They are more in Facebook than being in the Holy Scriptures, but they have a word for you. You have to ask yourself, where did you get that word from? From pizza? From your mind? From your agenda? From your manipulative, corrosive ways? I met this young lady for the very first time. I've heard about her many a times before last week. But as we sat, we were conversing together. She was maneuvering around and talking. She said, my grandmother, my grandmother, my grandmother used to be praying a lot. She read the Bible a lot, but she also had her Ouija boards. She knows how to manu maneuver the boards. And I said, I said, honey, what you're telling me here, you cannot have the Holy Scriptures and you having revelation and you're also having the demonic forces uh, channeling uh, spirits from the Ouija board to you from the same person. Can I submit to you? What I heard a week ago, it's in this chapter here in the book of Acts chapter 13. There were sorcerers and diviners. You're going to see in the missionary movement of the church how the apostle going to encounter people. In fact, by the time you reach chapter 16, there was a little girl that was a, a, a mind reader, a, a palm reader, who was even prophesying. That's a way that little prophetess used to make, making money for her owner. When the apostle Paul get 
tired of her in Philippi. Turn around one day. Rebuke that spirit. Hear me well. Cast that demon out of her. And she came back to her senses. Man, Paul was in trouble. But before we go there, look at the word. There were prophetess in the church of Antioch. There is nothing wrong with the offices. They can be male or female. The Lord give the gifts to whomsoever he wants for the growth and the expansion of his church. But we must be on guard. I heard my dear pastor mention publicly last Sunday, Pastor William Dwight McKissick, straight from the pulpit of Cornerstone Baptist Church last Sunday. He stated that this man walked into his church and wanted to come and uh, I'm from the potter's house where T.D. Jerk is the bishop and then uh, I want you to assign me to preach. And Pastor McKissick said it publicly last Sunday. You can look at the video. It's on there on YouTube. And ask him, are you from the potter's house? First question, have you ever preached at the potter's house for Bishop T.G. Jakes? No. And Pastor McKissick said it. When he said no, he said, okay, whenever you finish to preach your first sermon at Bishop, come, let's talk. After I heard Pastor McKissick say that from the pulpit, I said, wow, this sounds so sim similar to an exposure that I had at uh, Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship as an intern under Dr. Tony Evans, who preached a similar situation that a man in the neighborhood, well-to-do because he has money, he has influential in the, in the community, he comes and he wants Dr. Evans to make him an elder as part of the elder body of, uh, of Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship because he's, a, uh, he's an influential Oh, oh, well to do person in the community. He think the church of Jesus Christ is open up for, for, for anybody to come and carry their, their big, big, uh, big wings in the church too. He's have my big wings out there. And he, do you know in our time, people think that even in their own family, they can take any crazy mind who claim to be anything and want to push them before the Lord without even checking with, with Jesus. What am I doing? Listen, this is not a this is not Walmart. This is not Walgreen. This is not Target. Let me put it this way. This is not an airplane. Even a well mind regulated pilot who have his own children in the airplane will not turn a big airplane full of souls in there, including theirs. Turn the cockpit. No, that's my cousin. Come and fly this thing. I've been doing it for a long time. Uh, 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 look, uh, look at verse 13, chapter 13, verse 1 once again. In the church of Antioch, there were prophet, prophets with an S and teachers with an S. There was not one, but the offices of the prophets were in the church. The offices of the teachers were in the church. What's the difference, Pastor Derrick? One of them, the office of the prophets, they were foretelling and foretelling the word of God. Where the teachers were breaking down the doctrinal teaching of the word. The New Testament was not even, listen to me, packaged together yet. I just told you, we not even come to chapter 15, where we're going to encounter in chapter 15, where the council, the leaders in Jerusalem, will write a short version of the Holy Scriptures to tell the disciples on the return from their missionary journey. We're talking about the expansion of the church. Take this round. This will be the doctrinal statement structure that they ought to follow. Leave the Judaism system of the law of eating, not eating, leave that behind. Now we are in the new era called the New Testament time of grace. This is not the law. This is not the line of the priests. This is not come because you were born in the line of Aaron, you automatically connected. No, this is a new system that's been opened for the prostitute to just come out of the bridge, under the bridge, but that prostitute must walk in common women at the well, in the flow of the Holy Spirit to say, this water I did not have, but I met one at the well who gives me and changed my life and tell me who I was and caused me to confess. Come and see the man. You must approach by grace. It's through faith. There is no arrogance in this. There is no big up. And you are watching at times people who are literally filled with unclean spirits. 
They're confused in their own mind. One holy word, one curse word. One filthy word, one testimony. If you listen closely, you can see the mixture of wording in the, the devil, not the Bible too. Do you know how he tempted Jesus Christ? That's why I was sitting recently here, less than a month ago. One of our dear members, I'm um, caught between two appointments. One of our dear member, a young man, 16 years old, Jeremiah Pitts, he's graduating already high school. The same time graduation is taking place, you am I about to meet with the same almost uh, time with the Dean of Worship of Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. I said, I cannot be two places at once. How do I manage this important meeting in this graduation honoring of this young man that we prayed, honor, and watch him grow, and even baptize in the church? My point is this. I said, okay, let's go and meet with the dean first. There are some sessions that we need to touch, and I'm about to wrap up the meeting. And I said, dean, let me just share with you. You are in charge of all the teaching over this whole department of worship and church ministry and worship at the great Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary, the largest in the nation, if not in the world. Let me tell you a little statement I'm going to leave you with. This statement was the first one I literally opened my first record of professional work in this and contribution to the evangelical circle. With all humility, I'll tell you my first line was this. Worship is the mother of mission. And mission is the mother of true theology. And true theology takes us back now to educated worship. I said, that's the cycle. Because when I look at the Bible, it, it literally gives us that turns. When we begin to find God and true living God, we're worshiping him. But in the middle of worship and prayer and fasting, we don't just stay there worshiping, praying and fasting. The Lord will pluck out in our souls a desire to become like Christ who was the first missionary from heaven and came down to earth you begin to realize I need to cross the boundaries I need to cross the multicultural I need to cross the linguistic barriers I need to cross the ethnic barriers to tell them about this great savior that I'm worshiping but when you get there you find them worshiping also because everybody save or unsaved are worshipers the question is, who are they worshipping? If they come among you, they're worshipping their ancestors. I, I am a branch. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a brat. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a brit. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a brit. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, so, and they're telling you, they're worshipping their grandmama. Or they're worshipping their grandpa, but they're still worshipping Jesus too. You need to stop to tell them, you cannot be worshipping trees and worshipping Jesus and worshiping voodoo, and worshiping a bottle, and worshiping a rabbit tail, and mixing all of these things, and then Jesus is plucked right in the middle. No, it does. In other words, you begin to worship the living God in prayer and fasting. But when you get out there to do local, local mission or global mission, you begin to do what I call theology, the study of the true and living God. So you have prophetess in the church of Antioch to foretell and foretell and foretell the word of God based not on their opinion, not on their manipulative, humanistic trash, but based on the written and revealing word of God as the spirit of the living God is moving in their midst. And the teachers now begin to break it down according to the holy record and begin to teach them biblical doctrines, theological truth, so that when they begin to grow and mature and transform, they go out there. They don't go and preach American. They don't go out there to preach Haitian. They don't go out there to preach Australian. They don't go out there to preach or uh, German or French. They don't go to preach their culture, but they go to preach Christ and Christ crucified. There have been many missionaries. Oh God, help me. The, I researched this. I'm not just blowing out hot air. I've done this profession. I've researched this. In fact, I've been exposed to this in many contexts. And they live with the joy of going out there to serve the Lord, to take the gospel to the world. But when they reach out there, 
They forget that they are on a mission with a holy word for a Christ who himself is the only savior of the world. Look at the text once again. There were teachers. And then notice, look, put a dot, dot. He says, pay attention to who I'm going to bring out of the crowd now. Here is one. There were Barnabas. There were Simeon called Niger. There were Lucius of Cyrene. There were Manahem who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch. In other words, there was some heavy jacket in the church of Antioch. But everybody had to submit to the grace in the presence of the CEO of the church. Who's that? The Holy Spirit. Who in the middle of prayer and fasting is knowing where are you? What can I remove today? What vitamin can I drop? How can I help you to grow spiritually? How can I make you even more mature in your faith? Listen, once you come to this thing called the Church of Jesus Christ, back in Antioch, back in Jerusalem, or anywhere else, ever since, we all come by grace through faith. Not of ourselves, but it is a gift from God. That's salvation. But you cannot grow because of your pocketbook. You cannot grow because of your intellect. You cannot grow because of your network and your connection. You cannot grow because you went to Bible school or seminary or you have a PhD or demon, whatever the deals might be. You cannot grow because you become, listen, so big in the community. I'm from the White House. I got connection in the uh, uh, La Maison Blanche in Alco, the UN. In the, uh, d- d- listen to me. You can come from out there with all of that. When you come to the church, we are all, the, the level plan, is, the, the, the level field is, is flat. By grace alone we come. That does not mean you check your brain at the door. Not at all. Because they are teachers. Are you there with me? To teach you what? The word of God. Clearly. So you can know the truth. And the truth that you know and accept will do what for you? Set you free. Otherwise you can come with all of your head full of pride. Full of knowledge. Your pocketbook is full of money. Your big account is so loaded. You're still bringing little gods in the church. I'm afraid to say... The church of Jesus Christ worldwide might be loaded up with oligarchs. You know the term we learned during the Russian and the Ukraine war? The oligarchs? When the United States of America wanted to begin to squeeze Russia, he went after their oligarchs. That was the heavy packets. The, 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 the one who controlled the monopoly of the G, GDP of Russia. If you begin to squeeze them and se, uh, capture their assets, their yacht, I'm afraid that the church of Jesus Christ have lost its identity, lost its mission, begin to depend on the holy gods within the church. Who is the biggest giver? Who is the most influential? Who has connection in town? Who Messages like this, you know, excuse me. I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a, listen, this is the word of the Lord. I'm afraid that the church of Jesus Christ have lost his mission. And they begin to build up their empires with holy gods. They begin to have temple gods, just like they did in the time of Christ. Ministry on earth. The temple gods were there. They were trusting Christ more like detective wherever he goes. The temple gods, Jesus even healed a man. The man could not open his mouth to testify because of fear that the temple guards will report them in and then he will lose his part in the temple. I'm afraid that the church have lost its teaching. It has turned to holy gods. Who's the big connector in town? Who's the big packet? Who's the big giver? No, 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 don't touch that. Leave that one alone. And then the power of the Holy Spirit is decreasing because now it's holy gods that are in charge. It's telemarketers who are in charge. It's marketing schemes that are, and no wonder the mission mandate of the church have been disregarded. No wonder the power of the Holy Spirit of God is on life support. No wonder that the people, the sick come in, they cannot be healed. 
No wonder demonic forces are entering our worship centers. No wonder the, 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 the church, listen to me, the church, the satanic church is sending their own missionaries in the middle of our worship centers, worship services. Undercovers are coming from the satanic churches, coming and take their spot. And then while worship, everybody's making noise. Nobody's praying. Nobody's fasting. Fast what? Pray to who? Amen. I don't have no wonder our children are leaving to go to the clubs they are become the followers of the gangsters rather than them going among the gangsters to re-influence them back to Jesus Christ there were teachers look at the text with me there were men from the house of Herod the Tetras in the bunch there were soul of Tars in the mix don't miss that the end of verse 1, that last name, Saul. <laughs> this guy was a university combined with a seminary on two feet. He can tell you the law with his eyes. While Paul is, this is Saul in the church of Antioch. <laughs> Following his Damascus word in the middle of a prayer meeting. Where, where, let, let's move forward. Verse 2. This is where you need to see this. It's important. While they were there worshiping, you know, I wish I was there to see all these heavy wigs with hands open up. Forget who they are. Forget their titles. Forget what family background they are connected to. And then here we are to worship. Here we, and wholeheartedly, totally devoted worshiping the freshly ascended Jesus. And while they're worshiping together, look at the text, the, the ascended Lord, while they're worshiping him, and they were fasting. How long have you been fasting? I've been out there for three days. How, how long have you been a week or week? They were not popping in, uh, a sad face to show you, I, I'm fasting. There were no competition of, among fasters. It, it was not like, who's the longest fasting? Oh, you've been 40 days? Oh, wow. 40 days. You must be holy. Oh, 30 days. Hey, 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 whoa. 30, you can see now. You must be a prophet. None of that. None of that. Dr. Hendricks, who's now been with the Lord, warned us in a small discipleship class. He was mentoring and discipling a couple of Seven guys, say, guys, be very careful. There will be a time people will come among you in the church want to honestly learn the trick of the trades, but they're not after Jesus. They want you to give them all the methodologies so they can go out there to be big and pretend they, and they're, not, they're not after our Jesus. Be on the alert and teach the truth. I'll never forget I can see him doing that, saying it, and then Harold Hendrick does what doing. He does this with his hands and teach the truth. Men and women, we are in an era where our now everything is let go. You don't even have to teach the word. Just get people together and collect the money. Let them pat you in the back. We all sing kumbaya, and you sugar me, I'll sugar you. We all good. And the church of Jesus Christ is becoming anemic. No more prayer. No more fasting. In fact, if you pray too much, you almost think that you are out of your mind. Because you are depending upon the source to carry out his kingdom expansion. You cannot move the missionary movement of the church based on dollar bills. You cannot. Based on connections. You can have 15 airplanes because you can shuttle people from one place to another. You might be doing social work, not missionary work. There is a distinction. And they look so close. There are a lot of social work being done, being misunderstood for missionary work. According to the divine work, they're not even missionary work at all. No wonder. Jesus said, leave them alone. At the end, I'm going to separate the wheat and the tares. Let them play their games. But you teach the word. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit of God said, 
not the bishop of Antioch, and there was one. Which means the leadership must be in tune with the CEO of the church. Who is that church? The Holy Spirit. Last time I checked, he is the CEO of the church of Jesus Christ on earth. There is no other. Bishop or archbishop must come under and remain connected with the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, they're just giving you policy. They're just guarding their empires. They're just protecting their grass. They're going to make sure the dollar bills keep on coming. But they're not doing the work of the Lord. The Holy Spirit of God said, can you imagine, and this is the true church, the Holy Spirit of God is speaking in the middle of a service, and then there's somebody pulling your coat jacket to say, you talk too long, come out, shut the mouth now, otherwise we're going to turn the microphone off while the Holy Spirit of God is speaking. Can you imagine what I just told you is going on? Let me say it again. In the church of Antioch, while they were fasting and praying, while the Holy Spirit of God is coming to talk, uh, let's pretend the Holy Spirit of God will sit. Before it's set apart, keep on fasting, keep on praying. There's a demon here we're going to get out in five minutes, but this one is not going to move until you keep on praying for the next seven minutes. But the guy who's in charge of the microphone wants you to stop three minutes into it. Now you are in attention to stop in three minutes or to obey the Holy Spirit of God who's about to sell a soul, set a soul free in the next seven minutes. You tell me, do the math, who will win at that particular moment? Because we are professional here. We do ten timing. I mean, we, we are channel 17. If we don't do it professional, who are we impressing? What agenda, who, whose mission are we carrying? Whose empire are we building? Ike Belli used to say, you want to build Christianette? Preach sermonette. Make them happy. Watch the result. You simply have Christianettes in your hands. And when they begin to pee pee and poo poo in your face, as little baby do, spiritually, you will see the result of what, man, this guy blew my mind when he said, we don't reproduce what we desire. We reproduce who we are. Did you get that? You don't reproduce what you do desire. You can want to have mature Christian, strong, robust Christian. That's a desire. But you give birth and reproduce. You cannot be Chinese and giving birth to an African. You cannot do that. You cannot be an African and try to give birth to an Australian. It doesn't happen even in the natural world. Spiritually, you cannot be down there and hope to give birth to giants. You don't even know what that is. And in the church of Antioch, they want to be missionaries, they wait in prayer. That's a serious pattern that's still going on with the same movement. When you see people are serious, I'm not talking about coming to pay attention, coming to get attention, or coming to gossip, or coming to collect juicy gossiping things. I'm talking about coming for serious prayer and serious fasting. You, you can rest assured you're going to find a context where the Holy Spirit of God is over and about to select some serious worker to send out because he's cooking them, he's preparing them, he's shaping them, he's building the weapons, he's stacking up the powders, he's putting the, the strength, he's putting the dynamics together and he's going to launch them out. It happened individually, it can happen collectively also. But now we're in an era, you don't have to be saved to go on mission trip. Did you know that? You don't have to be saved. If you can buy the airplane tickets, let's go. If you get your visa, you get a passport, man, listen, you don't even have to pray or fast. Let's go. What in the world is going on? The identity of the Jesus Christ church has not changed the last time I checked. 
The mandate of being witness to make disciples is still the same. And the mission of the church have not been erupted by coronavirus or any trauma the world have experienced. It will go on like Jesus left it to be. With the same pattern and structure, there will be prophets. There will be teachers. There will be men of character who stand behind sacred desks to teach in clarity the holy dossier of the Lord, the word of the Lord. And it will not be arrogance. They might be misunderstood, but they will tell the word because there is a word to preach until the Savior comes. You will preach the word until Jesus returns. That does not mean you will be well accepted. You're not there for acceptance. That will not mean they will pat you on the back. You're not there for that. James, who's sitting as a senior pastor in Jerusalem, tossed him off the cliff of that temple. That's how he died. Peter, who just left, was crucified upside down. That's how he died. Paul here, who's speaking right now and taking the helm in the missionary journey movement with Barnabas. His head will be chopped off in a dungeon by Nero. That's how he died. Those guys were not crying out for platform and microphone and apartment and none of that. What are we doing? Are we buying into a tricks? Have we drunk the Kool-Aid? No, I don't have a building. I must not be saved. I may be out of the will of God. You might be in the center of God's will without a building. Be in the center of God's will without a building. That doesn't mean that's where God has you forever. Preach the word. Do it in season, out of season, in honor the Lord. You're not there to worship. Main building institution or none of the... Oh, help us. Look at verse 2. Look at verse 2 again in the text. We're still talking about the Christian identity. We are in a crisis of identity outside of the church, in the church, wherever we go. People are after self, selfie more than Jesus pleasing. Identity crisis is everywhere. Rather than turning the page, they're turning the, listen, the Facebook looking for people to accept them and make them feel as if you are somebody because Jesus is in your life. He has hired you to serve him. Honor him. You'll be okay. Just honor and devote yourself to worship. You don't have to worship men. Jesus can take care of you. He will actually, he said, I will not even leave you nor forsake you. Lo, and be with you when? Always, even while you're going through the harshest season of life. Men and women who have sold their souls for acceptance, sell the sacred desk in order to, be, to fit in. What a tragedy. Well, the mission movement of the church is still strong and moving. I wish I can take you to the underground church where people are losing their fingers, but they're singing all along. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, but the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. It's time for us to turn to a commitment and resolve with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in the swamp that we find ourselves, especially post-pandemic, when most of the people are leaving the church because they realize games are going on everywhere. This is a show. This is not church. This is a well-programmed machine. There is no Holy Spirit. I'll never forget about this Chinese preacher from the underground church who came to Dallas Theological Seminary preaching in the chapel, telling the audience of young theologues, future pastor and missionary says that we watch in China how the engineers can put their little engine of things together and cause a fan to go around. But I'm afraid we begin to see people causing fan to blow some kind of wind and call it the Holy Spirit is blowing without having the Holy Spirit. Now we have come to learn how to turn people in excitement and tell them the Holy Spirit of God is is moving and there's no Holy Spirit. There's some guy who's playing the button. is sleeping with somebody in the green room. The same guy who's shifting the gears. is sleeping in a hotel, five-star hotel with somebody else's wife working for him. The church of Jesus Christ is in trouble. 
But the true church is standing and moving strong and forcefully because there is a gospel to be preached. There is a savior returning. There are prophetess, still prophet, true prophetess, who respect and revere the Lord who's over their lives, both male and female. There are teachers who stay true to the text, to the Bible, to the ecclesiastical order, to their denominations, to their distinctiveness, still respect their parishioners, respect their employees, respect their subordinate. They're still honoring God. They don't look at employees as if they are slaves while they are still having a Bible in a different hand. Listen to me. We can have men and women in 2022 going after former slaves who used to have the Bible in their hands and have physical slaves serving in their house. Hear me well. They still have the Bible in their hands in 2022, preaching the word of God, but treating employees as if they were slaves of 50, 60, 70 years ago. And they treat them, laugh at them in the same manner. Here's another one for you. You can have guys who are great theologues, great writers, well-known speakers, and still treat a foreigner as if they are a little demon on two feet. Yet, that kid is a saved person who's trying to learn to become a servant of God. What in the world is going on in the church? We need to pause to ask our question. As we have lost the essence or the mandate of our identity in Christ, and we become schizophrenic. We have different type of mindset. We got the business. We got the organization. Or we got the church. We got a little time of prayer. We got a little emotion moving. We got a couple of books selling. We got a couple of trips taking. We got a couple of crews flying. We got a couple of... Oh, Jesus. The text says, look at the text. Set apart for me, for me. Not a set apart for the church of Antioch. The Holy Spirit is asking for Saul and Barnabas to be set apart for the church of Antioch or for him? For him. So when Paul, Saul and Barnabas get overseas, they will not be talking about the church of Antioch. They will still be under the ostracism and the respect of the organization. But they're not there to proclaim the church of Antioch, nor the church of Jerusalem. They go there to preach the gospel under the power of the Holy Spirit with me. Spirit, the identity that baptized them, will give them the tsunami's power to take the gospel. Even if they beat them, they come up again with joy, not resentment, to proclaim the gospel. Maybe we have too many set apart for their organization than for the Holy Spirit. We have many set apart for a salary than for the Holy Spirit. We have many who have sold their souls for a, 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 a number of amount per year, but not to the Holy Spirit. And then no wonder we have this kind of situation in our hands. Men and women, it's time that we reset ourselves in the hands of the CEO of the church once again the Holy Spirit look at the text set apart for me Saul and Barnabas Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them listen to me not the work they're leaving in Tiak to go and tell the churches over there to do not the agenda they're going to go and put a cultural yoke on the African people and tell them that you must, if you want, you got to dress like this. You got to sing for however, however many minutes. And after you sing, you got to read the scripture for however many passages. And when you finish, you have to use this type of thing for communion. When you finish, you got to say it like this. You got to repeat this creed, otherwise you don't have service. Oh, God have mercy. 
If you sing rap songs, that's not holy. You got to sing. Oh, you got to. You, you got to. And then the work which the Holy Spirit have set apart is nowhere on the agenda. Men and women, we need to go back to the work that the Holy Spirit of God have set apart, not for Tony Evans, not for Chuck Swindoll, not for David Jeremiah, not for Robert Jeffords, not for Jack Graham, not, not for Rick Warren, not, not for, listen, I can go and lame all. But to each one, Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 7. If Christ apportioned a work for you to do, do the work that he has called you to. That doesn't mean you cannot help Tony Evans. You cannot help Chuck Swindoll. You cannot help David Jeremiah. You cannot help Dwight McKissick. You cannot help, you cannot help Jim Sembala. You cannot. No. We are one body, the body of Christ. But when you begin to get Dallas Seminary, as if he's the God that gives you the order of, mar of your march, you're marching at the tune of Dallas Seminary. You forget that there's a Lord over Dallas Seminary. When you begin to walk at the march of Dallas Baptist University, you forget that there's a Lord that calls you, set apart a work for you to do. You're all over the map. You're all over the map. Some people will say, no, don't help Tony Evans. He already get all of them. Don't help Jim Sembala. They're already well known. You, you focus on what you got. Yours is not even. Your, and they compare. I say, no, 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 no. If the Lord called you to help Jim Sembala, help Jim Sembala to kill some demons. While he's in the front doing it. And then while you're helping Jim Sembala, the Lord will be helping you take your mission to where he has called you to do. This kind of Lord Jesus greed that's going on all over the place. That causes us to be with envy in one corner, greed in another corner, fights in a different corner, and the Holy Spirit of God says, I'm out of here. You can have your empire. You can have your, your little two people. You can have your Sunday school class. You can have your big crowd. You can have a million. You can have the whole world if you will. I'm out of there. You will want the Lord to be in it if you have two people or two billions. Two people or two billions. Under a tree or under a tent or in a cowboy stadium. You, Henry Blackaby said, look where God is working. Join him. And if he called you to serve, even if he called you under a leaf, stay under the leaf. Serve the Lord with gladness. Look at the text. For the work which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed. Notice that. The identification and the ordination is on the table. But they're still remaining in prayer and in fasting. Did you see that? It's not that they were fasting so that they can be called. You got that manipulation going around too. They come around ministry, around prayer meeting, around because they need a position. They need a title. They need to show you that they want fervor, they want fire, they want to serve the Lord. But they, they don't even, they just want a position, a title, or a paycheck. They want to learn the trick of the trades. Not an Antioch. Even after they've been set apart, they still remain. Look at the text with me. In prayer and in fasting. Because that's where the secret is. That's where the source of the power. You got to be in the presence to receive instructions and to be empowered to go. Jesus said, I have selected 12 men so that they might be with me and that they might go out. That must be a be with me first before there is a going out. How does the be with me take place? In prayer and fasting. Well, if you are allergic to prayer, you want to kill prayer in your house. You're not reading, you're not fasting. And you tell me, oh, what are you going to go? I'm a minister. Where are you coming from? Who called you to be a minister? How do you know you're a minister? You're not even praying or fasting. You, 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 you sneeze when they open a Bible. In front of you. you cannot even tolerate a five minutes prayer time. Amen. You, you're gone. Unless we, we're preparing for casualties. If we are preparing for casualties, 
Let them go with that kind of we, we threw. We threw. We don't have time for prayer. Don't even mention fasting. You're talking about all night prayer? What is that? What is all night prayer? What is here it is. They still remain in prayer and fasting. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and they sent them off. Do you know that there are some lately too who is not even looking for anybody to lay hands on them? Sign of authority. In Leviticus chapter 9 verse 29, the very first time a shift took place in the Aaronic blessing, Aaron's order was you put your hand and touch the people and you bless them. The crowd was so loud, so large. He could not touch everybody. First time, law of first mention, Aaron lift the first high priest alongside Moses, lifted up his hand and bless as if he did touch. By that time on, the shift takes place where you don't have to touch them physically. You can just lift up your hands. That's why you see most of the time pastors will be uh, pronouncing the benediction with their hands up. Guess where it's become even more credible? When Jesus, the high priest, the real one, is leaving earth to go heaven while he's passing mid-air among the powers of the air, he lifted up his hand. And guess what he did? He blessed the church and left her left his baby back blessed and he said to him here watch this bless their hands on them and send them off there's somebody who said some just went some were sent i'd rather be sent and pushing my chest forward somewhere because i just want to go i just went on my own and that's why when you meet one of those who were sent you can beat them up to try to discourage them along the journey. That's when the dunamis power really begin to come out. Say, so come on, bring it on because I'm not on my own. I got authority over my life. I got hands that will lay on me. I got prayer and fasting underneath my hood. And then or two, when the going get tough, you don't run to the bank, you go on your knees in prayer. Jim Sembala used to tell us all the time in a very small Bible study called MTI, Ministry Training Institute. I'll never forget it. He said, when the going get tough in ministry, you don't run to the bank, you go on your knees. That's where the power comes. Then you can stand on your feet and proclaim the gospel even Listen to me, even if the demons of the streets of the city will come into the church, you'll still be having Christ's power of the gospel for them to be saved. Come on, Jim Sembala, remind me of the truth once again. So I can do that street prostitutes, men who are speaking under influences of all kinds of spirits can become holy anointed choir singer ministers of the Lord Jesus Christ and God is still doing it. Wayward daughters and wayward son that the enemy comes in the back door of your family to cause your heart to bleed and take them out to the clubs and go and let them go and fornicate and go and party with the, with the city gangs and then watch on your knees. The Lord raise the power of prayer and make it contagious and bring your daughter right back become a minister of the gospel. You don't hear those things and then you forget them while you're in the journey. Or watch your son or your daughters become food in the mouth of vagabonds on the streets. Two o'clock in the morning, you're out there. What are you doing? You're watching for Satan to pierce your soul with an addiction? Satan has arrows. He can pierce you with a wayward woman who gave you a baby. And you are 18 years you're paying child support with no support of your own. And then you have to quit school. Deter from your destiny. Go and take care of boxes so you can provide child support. Oh, you don't do it? You go to jail. That's a system that is well established. You don't even need the devil for this. You don't even need the devil for this. You out there hanging out with them, they drop a little drug in your, in your drink and you think it's the same water burger drink you're drinking. <laughs> On one sip, you are addicted for 30 years to come. You begin to see things. You begin to talk with spirits. My brothers and sisters, the mandate of the church have not changed. 
The Holy Spirit is still alive for us. The prayer and fasting are still on the table. It's welcome whosoever will. As they were doing so, they lay hands on them and they send them off. They did not go on their own. They go and left with grace. They left with authority. They left with power. They left with the presence. And they left with the credential of the church. All of that behind them. And the same Holy Spirit of God is hover over them. Every step and station where the church is expanding. The multi-ethnic conqueror of the kingdom of darkness is out. Why? Because Christ came to seek and to save that which was lost. But he also come to destroy the work of the devil. He's still in the business of expanding God's kingdom. He's not doing that with bulldozers. He's doing that with saved souls who are committed to him. Monday, Tuesday, when day in day, 24 7. Committed to the work of the Lord. If you call to full time ministry, you'll be a full time minister. That doesn't mean you're flip flopping, not know who you are. There is no full time minister that is not a. Listen to me. Hear me well. There is no full time minister that is not truly. Multitasking. When you meet somebody who's telling you, I got a job at the church, but I have a job over there, I have a job over there, tell them, you better go and earn your bagel. If the church is not able to get you a bagel, do some work so you can earn a bagel. Don't go and rob and steal. Don't try to keep up with the John. Don't compare yourself with brother or sister so and so. But you don't have to go over there. I'm, uh, what's, the, what's the title? I'm double. What's, there's a term when you are minister, you're working in the world, a circular world. What's the t- I'm bivocational. Every minister is bivocational. Some of them are tri-vocational, quadruple uh, bo- vocational. They don't have to be going around every time bivocational as if you are, you are a harder worker than somebody else. Taking care of your family is a full-time job around the clock. You cannot let your son be in the streets and you behind the pulpit and you're not taking care of your son, your wife, your business. Your grass is as high as the building and you're, you're, they're calling the police to come to get your dogs off the streets. And then you're out there saying, no, I'm a full-time, I'm a bivocational. What, what does that mean? Because you're making a beggar with American Airlines. You pastor and preaching on Sunday, and then you're not preaching the word properly. You know you're not doing your homework, and then you come in before the people say, I'm bivocational. I must go and cut the boxes. Listen, every minister is trying by quadruple vocational, but the vocation of taking the cloth must take the preeminence. TJ was talking with a group of us. A couple of years before the pandemic in a conference room, say, listen, I, I'm a bivocational too. I'm passing a mega church. I'm writing books and I'm talking with groups here. I'm uh, speaking to businessmen. I'm sp- I'm bivocational. I'm bi. I'm. Uh, uh, it's not a. It's not a, like a, a big lepo you put on you like you 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 you. you. Don't be fool, trying to get attention. As if you you are this, that, and the other. What Paul say here? Man, the expansion and the mission mandate of the church must be adhered. Must stay where it belongs. There are souls to be saved. You see this portion here? Two of them were sent. Look at verse 4 with me. Acts 13, 4. And I'm going to wrap it up very soon. The two of them were sent on their way by the Holy Spirit. Did you see that? The Holy Spirit of God set them apart. The Holy Spirit of God caused the elders to lay hand of them. But they were sent by the Holy Spirit. Don't miss that. Because you can be lay hand on. You get your ordination paper. But you've been handcuffed by men. You've been handcuffed by your organization. You've been handcuffed by your mission agencies. You've been handcuffed by some holy gods of the church. Don't miss this word. The Holy Spirit of God, hallelujah, sent them on their ways and went, they went down to Seleucia. They sailed from there to Cyprus. When they arrived in Salamis, watch this, they proclaimed the word of God. No, 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 no. They make known the policy of the church of Antioch. 
they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogue. Watch this. John was with them as their what church? No, 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 no. John was with them as their disturbers. He was there to disturb them, to say, no, you cannot be preached. Are you the only one who can preach? Are you the only one who can teach? I'm here to tell you, to, I'm here to, to, I got a mouth too. No. John stay in his lane as their what? Helper. Who was in the front of the synagogue? Saul and Barnabas. Those were the ones he lay hands on to do the... Lately, we have the offices being confused. You don't know whose hand is on, who's the auxiliary, who's the preacher, who's calling the shots, who's not calling. Confusion is everywhere in the camps. No wonder the devil is having a field trips and then stack the mission of the church on its four rims. Not on four tires, on its four rims. In fact, some of those environments, you check what's the temperature of the mission movement of the church in some of those settings. Zero. And others, below zero. Why? John the helper is at the helm. He's telling Paul what to do. Barnabas cannot move if John doesn't tell Barnabas. And John is the helper. No hand was laid upon John's hand. If you check even deeper, John is not even ordained to do the work of the ministry. John is just carrying water. But now he's telling Barnabas and Saul where to go, where to preach, when to preach, how long you preach. You pray too long. Be quiet. I'm going to sit you down. Verse 6, this is to convict. Is it, this is too real to say. Is that true what you're saying here, Pastor Durst? Look at verse 6. The team traveled. By the way, it's a team now. They traveled through the whole island until they came to Paphos. There they met a Jewish, here is, a, here is opposition. They met a Jewish sorcerer and false prophet named what? Bar Jesus. Church, this is where when the church began to encounter opposition as such, false prophets, sorcerers, witch doctors, Palm readers, spirit channelers coming into the church. Never mind, the church is moving, but coming to the church, the, the invasion, the Russians are coming. And they're coming to the church, they want to take the microphone off your hands. You don't want to give them the slip your dollar bill and say, listen, give it to me now. Or I won't give you this. And look at the text. Bar Jesus presented himself before them on a serious opposition. The first of its class, after hands is on them, don't, don't miss this, but the Holy Spirit is with them. You guess who's with them here? The Holy Spirit is with them. Verse 7 Who was an attendant to the proconsul, Sergius Polis? This kid is not just a sorcerer, he got military might behind him. <laughs> the proconsul, an intelligent man. <laughs> he got intelligent dignitaries behind him with his unclean spirit. In other words, he got education. He has IQ. He has network. Behind. All of that is stacking up to come against Paul, Barnabas, and John and the team. Don't miss that. This is the first missionary movement. That has not changed either. When you go in up in the name of Jesus, you better be blessed and dressed up. You don't have to say, I'm not going to go to Haiti because there are too many demons in Haiti. Uh -uh. If God sent you to Haiti, you chicken out, you're going to find yourself in trouble where you are stopping. Because you're chicken out in fear as if those gods, false doctors, sorcerers, voodoo doctors are more powerful than the God who sent you with his gospel changing life. Or wherever. Doesn't have to be Haiti. Can be Manhattan Island. There are a lot of them in the Wall Streets who are doing as much sorcery as they're doing in Haiti. Did you know that? Let's stay with the text. 
uh, an intelligent man, verse 7. The proconsul, an intelligent man, sent Barnabas and Saul because he wanted to hear the word of God. So when this brother got all this power behind him, chief sorcerers among the elite in town, but the proconsul wanted to hear the word of God. Watch the text. Verse 8, but Elimas, his name is given now. Look, pull his name off the table. Elimas the sorcerer, watch the text. For that is his, what his name means, sorcerer. Oppose Paul and Barnabas and John and try to turn the proconsul from what? The faith. You're talking about a fish in town who's already influential. Welcome you to come and share about Jesus. But you got a sidekick on the side. Wanted to oppose. That's why we have to pray for people when we invite them to be baptized. You all kind of demons of hell now want to come out to oppose them from being what? Baptized. And they think it's a joke. And when Elimas wanted to oppose the proconsul, watch the text. From the faith, verse 9 says, Then Saul, who was called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit. This was not filled with Gamaliel teaching. The Holy Spirit who was with Paul went on four-wheel drive. That's what you just heard. There is a place for the holy men of God to get upset to. Call the police on him if you will. There is a place for him to get his baseball bats. There is a place for him to extend his right muscles out and slap the devil too. Just because you are a pastor, that does not mean you become a spaghetti man. There is a place for you to say, this time my house is a house of prayer. We get up to pray. This time nobody in my house, it's time for you to be out. If something happened to you at this time of the night when you're even leaving my house to go home, I am not doing the work of God. That can disqualify me for the ministry if you are out there this time of the night and you're not out there to do some kind of work. It's in the Bible. It's living according to the word in 2022. And when this opposition faced him in his face, Watch what Paul says. Paul says, I know the power. I was fasting. I've been praying. Discernment is coming down. I realize this, this guy here, he's playing a trick. This woman jumping in front of me here, this is not the Holy Spirit of God. This is a trick just standing here. You can open your mouth and curse it. In fact, it's under illegitimate move right now. It's not even covered. You can curse him for a two-day curse or one month curse or give her a three-month curse. Don't curse her for her to fall dead in your face. Give it to her so for a week or a month. You, you can time it and, and uh, watch what Paul is going. Paul was not Peter. Oh, oh, watch this. They said the Paul of Acts, you come into his face. If the Holy Spirit of God directs him to blind you, Paul is going to blind you on the spot. Watch this. Paul faced their position. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Watch the text. Look straight at Elimas, verse, eight, verse 9. He looks straight at him. Verse 10 says, you are a child of the devil. Verse, Paul was not cursing. Paul was not fighting. Some people will be at the scene. They will think now Paul is in the flesh. No, Paul is in the spirit. Paul is in the spirit. Rebuking the sorcerer. He was not fighting. Watch verse 10. Paul pick up and he says, You are a child of the devil. You are an enemy of everything that is right. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. You know what? Sometimes when people come before you with all kind of that, if you're not full with the Holy Spirit, you associate with them rather than standing in sharp opposition for the kingdom of God against the kingdom of the trickery and the sorcerers. Do you know how many people in churches, do you know how many pastors home 
are associating with unclean spirit late at night on Friday night, on Saturday night, uh, with all kind of drug traffickers taking their daughters. This man was an elder. He told me his daughter has a boy sleeping under her daughter's bed all night long. Listen to me. Elder of a church with his daughter has a boy sleeping under the bed all night long for many weeks and he had no idea if his daughter is bringing the boy in the home sleeping in his home in his bed while he is just he's he's in coma until the little girl got pregnant by that bomb destroy her destiny wreck their homes and by that time he woke up when you have an imbalanced mind of supervision, when you have an imbalanced mind of values, when you have a balanced mind of spiritual formation and strength, you can have those tornadoes invade your home. But you need to cry out to the Lord, the devil will not have my son. I don't care how strong this woman is behind her daughter. He will not have my son. You will not have my daughters. You will not have my child. I'm going to fight for my son's destiny. I'm going to fight for my daughter's destiny. They won't come with their trick. I don't care if they bring money, fame, of or name in your home. If it's not according to the Lord's will, you better stand like Paul stood and fight. And Paul says, you're not going to come here with your trickery and destroy the plan of God for this man's life. Watch the verse, verse, verse 10. Will you never stop perverting the right way of the Lord? Which means this guy has a PhD in tricking people from not accepting Christ. Yes. I wish I can see the apostle with all of his former terrorist muscles. Would you never stop opposing the faith and stop people from coming to the way of the Lord? Look at verse 11, and I'm going to wrap it up. Now the hand of the Lord is against you. Look at me. Paul did not say, I rebuke you. Uh uh. Paul go on the authority under which he was when hand was laid on him with power of the Holy Spirit with the authority under his which now he has authority to say not Paul rebukes you. No. The hand under which I am is against you now. Hallelujah. You who know who you are as a leader under the authority of Jesus in his proper place in spiritual life and righteousness. Listen, you can curse the demon out of your presence under the authority of the Lord. You're not doing it because you have power to curse. No. -uh. When you oppose the values of God in your own home, you can curse them even to their third generation. Watch the text. When Paul says, you are now under the Watch the text. Now the hand of the Lord is against you. You are going to be blind. And for a time, you will be going unable to see the light of the sun. Watch the text. Paul did not put a two weeks old curse on him. It was an immediate one. Look at the text. Immediately, mids and darkness came over the men. Did you realize this is a dignitary? who hang out with the proconsul, who has intelligent people all around him, but who's been worshiping against the Lord's work, against the Lord's kingdom, against the Lord's mission. What am I saying here? You see the mission mandate of the church? It has not changed. There is no an American mission, and a Dominican mission, a Haitian mission, a European mission, a Canadian mission. The mission of the church of Jesus Christ is the same universally. The spirit that is with the men of God, the servants of God, the prophets of God, the teachers of God, the pastors of God, they must be of God. God's power and presence is with them. They have authority not just to bless. Listen to me. They don't just have authority to bless. They can curse. And when they curse under the authority of the Lord on which they are working and serving, even they cannot go back to take it back. It's done. It's like if they pronounce a blessing, the blessing go out, they cannot reach midway to say, oh, you've been too blessed. I'm going to take the blessing back. They cannot. 
<laughs> That's a too deep theology, but it's true for the movement mandate of the missionary movement of the church. We have a powerless church in our hands because we confuse authority. Everybody's dumping, dropping with their diapers in your face and thinking that they are they got this, they got. you might have organizational authority, but you may not have lordship authority. Know the distinction between organizational authority and lordship authority. Totally different. And when they are lined up properly, great wonders will be done. And the mission movement of the church will go on. I wrap it up by saying, when Paul says, immediately mist and darkness came over him. You see the word darkness? Sometimes you can even see it on someone's face when they begin to dangle with things on the opposite side of the track. This is not a joke. You can visibly see darkness on someone's face when they begin to dangle in what's not holy What's not godly? What's not Christian values? Take it to the bank. And the text, when darkness covered him immediately, he groped about seeking someone to lead him by the hand. In other words, guess what? Immediately the man is blind. Paul did not punch him with his finger in his eyes. He spoke the words and the authority of the Lord blind the man who thought he was an opposition to the way of the Lord. And then Luke says this. This is Luke of physicians who know what medical processes are. Recording this under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God. Showing you there's a power that's at work here. Much more than the natural power. He wrap up verse 12 by saying. When the proconsul saw that. What had happened to him. Hallelujah. He believed. This is not. Modern day gospel. But God is sovereign enough to use a curse upon an opposition party to cause somebody who is hungry for Jesus to still believe. What does that mean? He can show you the power of family ancestor worship cannot oppose the gospel from somebody because when the gospel of God is out, it has the essence and the power to save regardless of forces that comes again. If you find servants who are not compromising with the gospel, who are not going down for acceptance, who are not selling their soul for a paycheck, who are not selling their family and their children on the altar for an ex, an ex, an ex, an ex invitation. The gospel will reach the council or the audience or the person anyway because it's, it's Jesus. You cannot stop Jesus. Your bulletproof, your jacket, your influence, your network, your dollar bill, your salary, your building, your campus, your education, your renome. You can be well known worldwide. Everybody in town knows you. None of that can block. If God called him to be what God called him to be, he will be. That's, that's a given. And this is the first taking off. You remember when the first airplane with the coronavirus vaccine was taking off? All the cameramen were there watching. Oh, the vaccine. Well, the vaccine called the missionary movement is out. No virus can oppose it. And the last time I checked, it's still moving and strong because the power is behind it called the Holy the ID. And we must be witness. And we must be making disciples. The proconsul will be coming. We must tell them who Jesus is without compromising, wanting them to hug us. Wanting them to, oh, you are durst. I don't care if you are durst. Are you safe? Are you safe? Are you still worshiping the devil and coming with Ouija board and the Bible in another hand? Are you safe? I'm not asking if you've been in church. I'm not asking if you're born in church. I'm asking you, are you saved? That's the word. That's the question. And you can be saved by accepting not an American God or Haitian God, or an African God, or Caribbean God, or Hawaiian God. You accept Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Savior of the world. And he's still there to save you by grace through faith. Paul Luke says, when the proconsul saw that, what had happened? He believed. Watch, watch me. For he was amazed at the teaching about the church of Antioch. The teaching of the Lord 
is what the proconsul believe. You know what that is? The gospel, the word. Miracle will not save anybody. The devil begin to commit, to perform miracles to make you believe that he has power. That's what this sorcerer came to do. But it was the power of the word, the power of the gospel that still moves in the church of God. Forward! Forward, I cry. Forward! Caruso Tonongon, preach the word! And there is power in it to save the worst sinner or the greatest religious person, the best president or the worst dictator can come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Where are you today? Where are you? Are you in the family of God or are you outside? If you're outside, you can come in. It's the same way for everybody. By grace through faith, not of yourself, it is the gift of God. And once you're in the family of God, there are rules and regulations to live by. You cannot come in and want to do the same thing you are doing outside. Now it's time for you to accept him, fine. Close your eyes, I'll lead you in a prayer. Not I, I don't save people. I can't save people. I don't know how to save people. I was saved myself by the same grace I presented to you. It's not a term, it's not like, it is a stamp, it's a person who saves us. His name is Jesus. Do you want him? If you want him, just say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Repeat that after me. Lord Jesus, come into my life. I want to accept you as my savior. I'm very religious. I've been in church. I've been doing all kinds of things. Or I've been out there. Or I've never heard about you, but today I've heard. You love me. You came to die and save my soul. I'm rendering my life to you. Come into my heart and save me. If you pray this prayer and you meant it, you are now a child of God. If I encourage you to be baptized, it's just a biblical way. Baptism is for those who are saved. We're going to do one at 3 o'clock in less than 50 minutes. Why don't you come and join us? The address is what? 981 Parkerville Road in Cedar Hill, Texas. If you're close by, you heard this message, you want Jesus, we'll teach you. We'll give you clothes. You don't even have to bring clothes to be baptized. We'll dress you up. We'll give you a towel. We'll give you a certificate, sealing that you have recognized you've done it. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and give you his peace. Have a blessed Sunday in the Lord.